There was only one time that I saw men wash clothes in West Africa. It was at the end of a 24-hour visit to a village atop the highest mountain in Togo, Mount Agu, which is a lush, green, tropical forest with banana leaves the size of adults and a relatively breezy and agreeable climate compared to the thick heat down below. Mount Nagu is not a tourist destination. It's just a rocky, verdant, elevated place where some Togolese people live. And we had an invitation to stay there overnight because via a loose connection, Matt, who was a fellow Peace Corps volunteer, had visited these folks for a long weekend once before. Donnie Jigbe and his family, our hosts, went absolutely out of their way to welcome us. They had procured supplies from the bottom of the mountain. They had heated water over open fires for all of our bucket baths. They had given up their most comfortable straw bed. And it was typical West African hospitality. Our hosts were honored to have us, honored to share their food with us. They really barely knew us, yet they treated us like family. Donnie's open-heartedness and sense of hospitality really reminded me of what I had experienced during my first two years of Peace Corps in Burkina Faso, just north of Togo. In Burkina, uh, hospitality was foundational. For example, anytime someone was eating, they would say to anyone nearby, vous êtes invité, you are invited, meaning please come and share my food with me. And they really meant it because on a daily basis in Burkina, I was welcome to share breakfast, lunch, dinner, tea with friends, with neighbors, and with perfect strangers. One time, a fellow bus passenger with two peanuts invited me to share her snack and she gave me one. Donnie was also a typical West African man in that he was clearly the leader, the patriarch, you know, the guy who runs the errands, who carries the conversations, who fixes things that are broken. Whereas his wife and female family members were also what you'd expect in that region. They were quiet and busy. They were carrying things, cooking and cleaning. So here we were on the mountain having breakfast with our very gracious hosts and Matt had excused himself and it had been a while and it had really been a while and it had been so long that our host eventually said to me, look, Christina, where's Matt? What's going on? Did something happen? And I said, hey, I don't know. I've been here with you. I, I, I just don't know. Eventually, Matt came back and after a long while and he called out to me in English in a very strained tone of voice, like, like a hysterical tone of voice, you know, and it was so crazy, the tone, that even through the language barrier, because they don't speak English, they speak French and local language, these Togolese friends of ours could hear that something was wrong, and they said, Christina, what happened? Is Matt okay? And I said, look, I don't know. Give me a minute. I'll go find out. So I went to speak with Matt privately, and it took him a long time to spit it out what exactly had happened to him, and finally he admits what happened while he was gone for so long. He fell into the latrine, 12 feet deep. One step through rotted wood boards, whoosh, he hit rock bottom, factually and figuratively. So falling to the bottom of a 12-foot deep pit latrine is the worst. It's the worst. It's the worst nightmare for Americans, for Peace Corps volunteers, for Africans. I think I could safely say for all humans, it's on our list of things that are just some of the worst things that you can think of happening. So if you're picturing that scene from Slumdog Millionaire, Okay, it wasn't that bad in the sense that the liquid filth was not nearly as deep for Matt as it was for the child character in that movie. Um, also, thankfully, Matt was wearing boots with hard toes rather than flip-flops, which we very often were wearing. And he was able to use the hard toes of those boots to crush the biblical-sized insects that had bore holes into the mud walls of the latrine. <laughs> He could feel the insects reverberating their death rattle as he crushed them in their holes, their homes, to climb his way out. So there are two things you should know. One, Togolese are an extremely clean people. They wash three times a day or more, at least once before every meal, for a little bit of cleanliness context. And two, never once in my three years in West Africa had I ever seen a man do laundry. That was a woman's job. Nevertheless, when Matt escaped that latrine and stripped down to bucket bathe, Donnie took charge. Donnie scooped up those rancid clothes and made off to the nearest waterfall. I tagged along and I saw with my own eyes Donnie, not a woman, not his sister or wife, wash those clothes and those boots with laundry detergent, dish liquid, body soap, and bleach. Because here's the thing. It's true that men in Burkina Faso and in Togo don't do laundry. 
But Donnie was our host. And it's also true that the joy and honor and responsibility of providing hospitality is one of the most important cultural norms in the region. On that day, hospitality trumped gender. So Donnie and his family were horrified and humiliated and so apologetic. And they told us they don't even use that latrine themselves. They use a rocky cliff off the side of the mountain. At this point, Matt and I were laughing. Donnie was not. He summed up his final thoughts on the matter. God is good. God is great. Thank God it wasn't Christina. Donnie begged me to come back one more time before going home to America, and I did. And even though he and his community never had a Peace Corps volunteer, Donnie personally built a modern cement latrine, honoring a promise he had made to us and paving the way to welcome many others in the future. Matt and I came home from Togo in 2010. We got married in 2013, and we live in Washington, D.C. Matt is from South Carolina, I'm from New Jersey, and we like to joke that DC has all the efficiency of the South and all the hospitality of the North. But despite our city's reputation, when we welcome guests to our home, we try to live up to the West African standard. When you have two peanuts, share one. When dining outside, invite your neighbors. Always make sure guests have a comfortable bed. And when accidents happen, the men do the laundry.